Welcome back to another video at Retro Rocket Studios. I'm Landon. I'm Mark. And uh, so we're back from a hiatus and we just had some quick thoughts on displays, what to use if you're a photographer or videographer, and also whatever you do, Mark. Music. <laughs> Film composer. Yeah. So on our other channel, Akiyama Music, we already talked about the Mac Studio because I was thinking about switching over from that for my iMac um, for for audio production and video production also. Yeah, we'll link that video somewhere here. Yeah. <laughs> and so I've been working on one of the new MacBook Pro 14 inch laptops with the M1 Max chip. And the whole idea behind getting that was that eventually I would be upgrading to a bigger display. So using the MacBook in clamshell mode and using a monitor. Um, I was trying to look at cheap options like the LG Ultrafine 4K. One solution that I found was a Thunderbolt display from 2009 and that era of displays. Now those are non-retina displays, but I figured they could be a good budget option for a monitor for me to connect to my MacBook 2. So, I have a list of some good things, some bad things that I thought about those ones that I just want to briefly run over and then we'll compare that to the studio display that we have behind us here. Spoiler alert. Number one. <laughs> the Thunderbolt display, it's good as a budget option. It's non-retina, so what you see is what you get and it's about a 2.5K display. But I did find that it was hard to find one that was in mint condition or in very good condition. A lot of the ones that I got from eBay, the sellers were winding up the cables inside the little stand of the hole and that hole is really sharp so it was cutting into the cables a lot and you can't replace those cables unless you do like a whole refurbish of the monitor take the screen out change the cables that's and the only way to do that they're not detachable yeah and then the main thing that i thought would be really good with those is you still have good color reproduction but one of the things that i kind of noticed was the colors don't match and one of them had more of a slight blue tint so some of my images looked a little cooler than they did on the other ones and also how I did on my MacBook Pro. Now I'm not comparing them exactly to my MacBook Pro when I had them in hand but what I did find was that blue, blue hue was something of a degradation of the display itself and not something that can be changed with color management or creating a new color profile or um, or calibrating the display. So rather than spending money on software or external hardware to try and fix that, I just decided to return both of those displays and eat the cost of a new studio display. Anyway, ultimately, I decided to go with the Apple Studio Display. This is the non-height adjustable and just the standard display without the nano texture. Long story short, I'm glad I did. The Studio Display is very good at what it does, even if it is a little over overpriced. It just works. It's an Apple display that connects and interfaces directly with my MacBook Pro. I don't have to worry about the color reproduction, all the functions on my keyboard work to control the brightness. It's just as plug and play as you get. Though, with that said, there are some caveats that I found with the studio display. Number one being the price. The price is sky high. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, for a display, new price, old tech. <laughs> exactly, like you're paying a whole bunch of money for old tech, but in a new package. So this is basically the same display that you get in an iMac 5K Retina display back from like 2017. That's what I have. But it was the only 5K display that I found compatible enough with my needs. And the reason why I wanted 5K was for perfect scaling between Retina. And another con that I noticed was that there's some backlight bleeding on the edges you do also see some of that on the iMac 5K displays as well. 
that this one's based off of. So um, I wasn't too surprised about it, but it's only there if you really, really look for it. Which you did, so. <laughs> I did, I did for this, for this video. However, there is one big issue that I found with it, and that's there's only one Thunderbolt cable, or one Thunderbolt port, rather. And I found that to be an issue because I have four Thunderbolt ports on my MacBook Pro and only one on my studio display. So having only one Thunderbolt port on the back of the display, it's kind of a disappointment, but I'm guessing that's a limitation of the processor inside the A13. The display quality is really good. It's not as good as the new MacBook Pro's um, liquid retina displays, but it's still very good. It's 5K. It has all the resolution for days that I need, and you know, it just works. So we were hoping when they first came out with the studio display paired with the Mac Studio that the new display would have the same mini LED liquid retina type thing that the MacBook Pros do and the uh, I think the iPad does now. Yeah, not yet, so. I will say, height adjustable, not worth it. Don't get that, that's silly. I mean, I would probably want it, but it doesn't rotate like the other one, no. so it really doesn't do that much. Waste. Also, the nano coating, we looked, we looked at both of them, the Apple and the Apple Store. It's nice, but I think you sacrifice too much clarity, mm -hmm. and the colors get a little rainbowy, so eh, not worth it. Save some money. There you go. All right, we'll see you in the next video. Yes.